Okay, now let us look at the structure of the nephron. So we already discussed that nephron is a structural and functional unit of the kidney in which the actual filtration of blood takes place. So the nephron, it, is, it looks like a coiled thread-like structure. So it has got two major parts. One part is this Malfeasian body. So the nephron, it has got one part Malfeasian body and the other one is renal tubule renal tubule so this part is called as malfeasian body so this head like part is called as malfeasian body the malfeasian body is comprised of bowman's capsule this cup this empty cup like structure is called as open cup like structure is called as bowman capsule and inside the bowman capsule we find the capillaries the capillaries very fine capillaries that are tangled together we call it as a glomerulus so the glomerulus and bowman's capsule together called as malfeasian body so malfeasian body means glomerulus plus bowman's capsule these two together called as malfeasian body and the remaining part this tube this complete tube which is connected to the pelvis and finally opens into the ureter that tube is called as renal tubule so that is the renal tubule so every nephron is richly supplied with blood vessels that is for the exchange of materials waste materials to throw out into this renal tubule so the tubule has got three major parts the renal tubule is having three major parts one is PCT Second one is loop of Henle or Henle's loop and third one is DCT. PCT means proximal convoluted tube. Proximal convoluted tubule PCT, loop of Henle and distal convoluted tubule that is DCT. So this area, this part is called as a DCT, distal convoluted tubule, this part. And this first part of the tube is called as proximal convoluted tubule. PCT, this part from here to here, you call it as PCT. And from here to here, you call it as DCT. The PCT and DCT are connected by a thin loop U-shaped U tube. This is in the shape of U. This U-shaped tube is called as loop of Henle or Henle's loop. The Henle's loop. This is found here. These are the three major parts and each part is having its own function in the process of filtration. And here the glomerulus that is that a network of blood vessels that are found in the Bowman's capsule. Here it has got two arterioles connected to it. One arteriole is bringing the blood into the glomerulus that is afferent arteriole. arteriole afferent afferent arteriole which brings the blood into the glomerulus whereas the other one is efferent efferent arteriole which brings blood from the glomerulus to the capillary network and here if we uh, we observe we find here a network of capillaries that are covering the tubule so this renal tubule it is totally covered by a network of blood capillaries so these blood capillaries they are forming a bridge between the renal vein and renal artery so these capillaries are connected to the tubule and they help in that exchange of materials and extra water and ions so this network of capillaries that are found around the tubule are called as peritubular peritubular capillaries Peritubular capillaries. These are the peritubular capillaries. So once the urine is formed inside the nephron, once the blood is filtered inside the nephron, so whatever the filtrate is there, means that is the collected in the filtration. That filtrate is passed from PCT, PCT to loop of Henle to DCT and finally it is connected to the renal tubule. Finally it is connected to the calyces in the kidney. 
calyces 2 it is connected to the pelvis in the kidney and pelvis 2 ureter so you know that ureter is the tube which carry the urine to the urinary bladder so whatever the final production the waste that is produced the liquid liquid waste that is produced in the renal tubule that is the renal tubules of the nephron are connected to that calyces they form the calyces inside the kidney so this is the shape of the kidney here are the calyces from calyces to this place called as pelvis and from pelvis to ureter and from the ureter it is passed to the urinary bladder now let us see the various steps of formation of urine or the various steps involved in that filtration of blood in a nephron now let us see the formation of urine the mechanism of formation of urine the first step in the formation of urine is glomerulus filtration so we have seen the structure in the bowman's capsule here is a network of blood vessels called as glomerulus so this glomerulus is connected to afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole the blood it comes into the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole afferent arteriole and there the filtration takes place so during this process some filtrate is collected into the bowman's capsule some liquid is uh, uh, absorbed with waste materials along with waste materials a lot of water is also absorbed and the remaining blood is sent out through the efferent arteriole now whatever the filtrate is there that is collected in the bowman's capsule that filtrate it goes down it passes down into the renal tubule so this is the first step glomerulus filtration the next one tubular reabsorption tubular reabsorption so it enters into the first part of the renal tubule what is that pct proximal convoluted tubule so what happens in the pct proximal convoluted tubule large amount of filtrate is collected large amount from the blood that is almost equal to blood except the blood cells whatever the filtrate is collected in the glomerulus it is almost equal to the blood except the blood cells blood cells are not absorbed whatever there is in the plasma mostly it is absorbed but from the filtrate whatever is absorbed from that most of the substances will be reabsorbed into the blood by the peritubular capillaries so there around the tubule we have a network of capillaries called as peritubular capillaries so most of the filtrate and most of the water and useful substances are absorbed back we call that as a reabsorption which is the second step that takes place that is the tubular reabsorption now let us look at the third one tubular secretion so here once reabsorption is done in the proximal convoluted tubule 75% of the filtrate is reabsorbed the remaining filtrate it is passed to the loop of henle and it enters into the distal convoluted tubule dct so in the distal convoluted tubule we see the tubular secretion so the distal convoluted tubule it secretes something into the tubule and even the peritubular capillaries from the peritubular capillaries the excess ions sodium na positive cl these kind of ions excess ions are secreted into the tubule so secretion into the tubule takes place waste materials from these capillaries are secreted into that tubular part that is in the distal convoluted tubule so this stage is called as tubular secretion and the fourth stage is called as concentration of urine concentration of urine so actually in the glomerulus large amount of water is absorbed or large amount of filtrate is absorbed nearly some 5 to uh, 8 liters more than that filtrate is absorbed but out of that filtrate we excrete only a few ml the remaining all the liquid is reabsorbed into the blood again back otherwise we used to lose large amounts of water whatever 
the filtrate is absorbed most of the filtrate 75 percent it is absorbed back in the PCT region proximal convoluted tubule and nearly some 10 percent of the thing is absorbed in that other DCT area. So, the urine is concentrated it becomes so uh, thick concentrated with the solutes that mineral salts and other pigment like urochrome which is generated uh, during the degradation of RBC the pigment urochrome which adds some color straw color to the urine. So, that pigment and the other waste salts and water. So, with this the urine is concentrated in this stage. So, in the concentration of urine that is the reabsorption of water from the urine back into the blood circulatory system is regulated by a hormone called as vasopressin. vasopressin. So, generally this vasopressin is secreted in our body when we are dehydrating, when we are deprived of water, our bodies are deprived of water then body should not lose much water. In such cases the urine is more concentrated. So, you find that more concentrated urine is more colorful when compared to that uh, normal urine. People who take more fluids and fruit juices and large amount of buttermilk, coconut water and who drinks large amount of water. So, in their bodies there is no necessity of the hormone vasopressin because your body has got sufficient amount of water. So, there is no need for such concentration of urine. The urine is not that much concentrated less concentrated urine is passed and the passage of urine will be more number of times. Sometimes it may lead to a disease condition called a, uh, that is passing excess amount of uh, urine which is called as diabetes insipidus. So, in which large amounts of urine is excreted. So, the excretion of the urine is controlled by a hormone called as vasopressin. 